Hi. On behalf of Strand Releasing, Hani Abu Assad is interviewing Mariam Tuzani on behalf of our release of Adam. Start. Okay, well, uh, good morning, uh, Mariam. Um, I am so glad to, uh, to have this opportunity to talk to you directly about your uh, first feature film, Adam. Uh, congratulations, first of all. Um, my first question is, um, how was the genesis of uh, Adam? How, how, always it's interesting to hear how mm -hmm. a director and a writer came up with the story. Mm -hmm. Well, hello, Hani, and um, I'm very happy to, to be able to talk to you today about Adam. Very happy to meet you as well. And uh, yes, it's always, I guess, interesting to find out where, where a story really began. And um, for me, um, it began, uh, it, was, it was actually a story that's inspired, the film that's inspired by a real encounter. Um, it began uh, the day this uh, woman, a uh, total stranger, came knocking on my parents' house. Uh, she was um, eight months pregnant. She was alone. She was afraid. She had nowhere to go and she was not married. And um, my parents decided to let her in for a few days in order to try to help her find a solution, but very quickly they realized that there was no solution they could, they, they could really give her. Um, and they decided to keep her with us until the moment she gave birth and see whatever she decided to, to do later. So I, I, you know, the first few days ended up becoming um, more than a month and I ended up uh, experiencing the last part of her pregnancy with her. And as you can imagine, it was a very, very intense experience. It was very, um, it was very, uh, how can I say it? It was very beautiful, but it was very painful at the same time because I really saw uh, this young woman become a mother basically in front of my eyes. And I saw this young woman trying to, to, to suffocate her, her maternal instinct because she knew that she had to let this child behind her. She, had, she, she was obliged to give him away in order to be able to continue her path. So for me, it was very, um, uh, very, very, um, very intense experience, like I was saying. And I kept her inside me for a lot of years. And uh, really 17 years later, when I became a mother for the first time, when I got pregnant for the first time, and I started really feeling my child inside me, I realized the violence of what this woman had experienced. Uh, and I realized that I felt it in my own flesh. And so basically I just started writing instinctively. There was nothing rational about it. It was just something that I'd had to come out. Uh, I didn't know uh, that it was gonna become a film at the beginning. I didn't know what I was gonna make out of it. I just needed to, to, to express what I felt. And, and meanwhile, in you know, 17 years had gone by, I had experienced a lot of things in my personal life as well. Uh, a lot of grief, uh, joy, uh, all these things that got mil mingled inside me. And basically the different characters started to take shape and, uh, and that's how um, Adam started, uh, started its, its way inside me really. Unbelievable! This is moving story. I mean, it's uh, wow. I I I didn't realize that it's so personal, and this makes it even more intense to me now. Um, well, this realistic story is is uh, very moving, but also very poetic. Very poetic. I was like amazed. I felt like you was very you was very influenced by the Arabic poesy, although. You had like a, kind of the influence of, of the realism of the Dardan brothers, you know, but you gave it an Arabic authentic, um, uh, 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 poetic uh, storytelling that it was like very, very to you. Like I, could, I, did, I couldn't compare it with another uh, film or director. So I, um, yeah, congratulations. How was, what is your um, relations to Arabic po poesy? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's, um, it's funny you ask that question. I'm, I love poetry. I've always loved poetry. I, I, I read a lot of poetry. I, I like writing poetry. And, uh, and so it, it touches me that you, that you say this. And uh, I like a lot of the Arab poets. I like, uh, I like the Sufi poets a lot. Uh, I, I, like, I like world poetry also. I like, I like uh, poets from, from, from 
from different parts of the world as well. Uh, but in any case, um, I, I think that I think that life is like this in, in, in reality. Life is, uh, even in its moments that seem the darkest, there is something poetic, you know, uh, as, as, long as, you, as long as you can see it, you know, there's always something beautiful in whatever you're experiencing. Um, and, um, and, and it's true that I, it wasn't something rational, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess it's there. And yes, poetry is a very important, a very important part of my life. I, I don't know if you speak about uh, poets like uh, Rumi, uh, you know, I, I, for me, it's a real inspiration. Uh, I don't know, there, there, there are so many, there are so many. You say it is, uh, it is unconscious and you love uh, Rumi, but also every, like every frame is a painting, like truly, like I felt like you are influenced by poesy, but also by painting and uh, who's like, what is your influence uh, from the, let's say from the painter point of view? It's true that I am very influenced by, I, I, I love painting as well. And uh, I realized um, after I started shooting uh, that, that there was a lot of this influence. I mean, there is all these things that I think, you know, uh, constitute who we are and, 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 and what moves us and that, you know, impregnate us and that after will maybe transpire through our work. And it's true that, uh, I don't know, a painter is like a Caravaggio, uh, Vermeer, uh, De La Tour uh, are painters that I really love, you know, the clair obscure, the, 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 you know, the color palettes they use, uh, the depth and strength of their images is something that, that has, always, uh, has always, I guess, uh, um, you know, been an inspiration to me. And I realized after uh, that they had also really influenced uh, my, my um, th the way I, I conceived uh, uh, the 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 scenes the way uh, the way uh, you know that with the uh, Virginie Surdesh the 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 DOP you know we we worked the light uh, the day the way the the color as well uh, was um, was very important you know uh, in each uh, in e in each image and um, and it's true that it's only things that I realized afterwards. Wow, amazing! I mean, uh, it's it's like I have to, I have to be honest that I when I was watching I felt like, you know what? The, how she managed as a first it's your first feature film, yes. Although you wrote before and you acted, but this is the first time you direct a long feature film. You did two short movies, but um, I was amazed like how how the, your frame and your image was very controlled, was, had a clear voice of you. How did you manage as a first time director to do that? It's uh, mostly like fair, first time directors, you feel like, oh, it's like, it's kind of, they are trying to do like the same as this director or that, you know, uh, but I felt that the, the, your voice was very clear there. How, how, how did you manage to do that? I also unconscious, <laughs> I guess, but uh, I like taking my time. I like taking my time and, and I, 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 um, I pay a lot of attention to detail. For me, detail is extremely important. And it's true that I, I really enjoyed being able to, to think about every single detail that I would be working on, to take my time and really enjoy every, um, you know the composition of every shot uh and it was it was just I, I guess it's just once again taking taking your time to 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 do the things you you know that you really want to do inside not trying to be like you said you know necessarily like 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 somebody else you know just uh just uh, trying to 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 find a way to to express uh a feeling uh an image uh, a sensation because for me Adam is a lot to film also about uh, it is a film about of characters but it's also a film of uh, sensation it's also a film of sensations I really wanted to be able to have access through the camera to all the 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 inner workings of these two women I really wanted to be able to be in a place where I could see them evolve and uh, and give 
time for this evolution to, to, to come about naturally and to be really felt. Uh, I really wanted to, to, to feel the textures, uh, to feel the, them working the dough, for instance. Um, I wanted it to be very carnal, very, very physical in that sense as well. Um, and for that, I, I mean, for me, it is really all about detail. And it's about being able to take your time. And it's a film also that talks about, about taking the time because Yeah, well, the last thing I, like what I understood uh, from the last thing uh, you said that you take your time and you love details, but what I understood, what my conclusion is that you follow, when you are directing, you follow your instinct. This is how you get a very personal and very, uh, you know, you know, very you and not uh, imitation of somebody else. Well, um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have this conversation with you because also I felt when you go into the characters, you know, uh, Abla and Samia, um, they were kind of, uh, not mirror, but I felt like uh, Abla is the flash forward of Samia and Samia is the flashback of Abla. How this, how this construction came to your mind? I think, I mean, they are very different women. They are very similar, like you say, at the same time. They are very similar because, because there are, there's a lot of things that, that brings them together um, in the sense that they're both fleeing. They're both women that are running from something. They're running from an emotion uh, for different reasons. Abla is running away from, from, from the pain uh, of, her, of her husband's death, from this grief that she has never been able to face. So she has somehow remained frozen in time. And, the, the death of her husband has somehow been stolen from her. These last moments have been stolen from her. And, and like I said, she, she, she has decided to, to cut herself emotionally from, from everything she can feel uh, in order to protect herself. So she is on the run. And Samia is a woman that's on the run for a different reason because there is this life that she's carrying inside her that's becoming uh, every day more, more tangible, every day more concrete, and that she's trying to run away from because she knows that the pain of leaving this child behind is gonna be unbearable. So basically she is also trying to shut off her emotions. So there are two women on the run that are gonna meet at a certain point in their lives. And it's really this meeting that's gonna be able to you know, that's going to transcend them and it's going to be able to, to, to change both of their destinies and transform them because there is a birth on one side, there is Samia that's going to give birth to this child, but there is also a rebirth on the other side from Abla, Abla because Abla has, 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 has died somehow the day her husband has died. So now she's going to be reborn to life and there is this complementarity in that sense in, the, in their paths. And they are potentially strong women. They are both strong women that life has, has you know, um, uh, I don't know how to say it in, um, in, in English, that uh, life has uh, mis, mis I, I wouldn't say mistreated, but has, has um, challenged in different aspects. Wounded them. And wounded, exactly. And yeah. both have very deep wounds. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, yes, I mean, it's beautiful, uh, beautifully said, beautifully done, I have to say, and, uh, uh, we, like what also intrigued me, uh, um, how how was the how was working with uh, with these two actresses? You know, did you like left to them the space to improvise, or you was like really dictating uh, the the po poetry on them? I think really for me, it's all about finding a, finding a harmony. It's like a dance, you know, when, 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 you're, um, when you're shooting certain scenes, you know, it's, I mean, there is this dance scene, but I think the whole thing is like a dance in, in reality. For me, I mean, I was lucky to have these two amazing, amazing actresses, uh, Nisrin Aradi and Lubna Azabal. Uh, I was very scared before I started casting because it's true that I had been, so attached to my characters. I was really so, so, so strongly linked to these two women as, as I wrote that I was really, I mean, what I feared the most was the day that I would start my casting because I said, it's gonna be very hard for me to find the women that actually, um, you know, 
are able to 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 fill in my you know fill in reality what I had imagined, and then you know um, after 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 some time you know there was mystery and there was Lubna and I was completely bl blown away by what by what they had to offer because they both have a real depth in their um, in their uh, interpretations in their understanding of the characters and for me it was crucial that they both really understand uh, these characters and 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 once again the inner workings of these characters who these women were what what their what what they were running from what their wounds were uh and it was wonderful working with them because uh for instance with lubna we worked a lot in the medina of casablanca trying to to observing uh women uh, such as abla uh talking but but really really trying to get in in into the flesh of abla through through the contact through the real contact with the women in the medina uh with nisri naradi we spent a lot of time as well with the, with young unwed mothers sharing their experiences talking so it was really a lot about preparing the characters beforehand and um for instance, even the, the 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 making of the pastries, the ziza, the bread, uh, everything. Uh, there was a coach with which uh, Nisri and Aradi and uh, and Lubna Zabal worked uh, every day in order to 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 learn how to actually make the dough. Because for me, it was really important that this these these things weren't acted; that they were really felt. I really wanted them to know what it felt like to work this dough, to knead the dough, to make these pastries. You know in order to really be able to, 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 to go into the depth of these characters. And like I was saying, working with them was absolutely amazing. And of course, I mean, there is all these things that they also have to offer, uh, which comes from who they are inside, the richness of, who, of, of what they are inside. And they're, they're both uh, extremely, extremely rich, rich women. And, um, and of course, um, there is moments uh, when, when, I mean, I wouldn't say that there was a lot of improvisation in the film. It's true that, I, I mean, I did know what I wanted in each scene. And then of course I was open to, 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 the, to the actresses proposing. Uh, I, I was very, very, uh, uh, very sensitive to what they had to propose yeah. that was not, was not, uh, not necessarily what was written. But it was also a lot about preparing the scenes beforehand, uh, not rehearsing the emotion, never rehearsing the emotion. We never did that. It was really preparing the, talking about the scenes, every scene before we shot it, and really trying to keep uh, emotionally um, uh, the rhythm in the film, because it's a film that uh, has a certain emotion that has, I mean, the emotion always has to be at the right moment, basically. Uh, and, and there is a real evolution uh, of the emotion within the characters and with each other. So it was really trying to, to, to make sure that we were really in the right place regarding the emotion. Uh, and that was really a lot about talking about the scenes beforehand. And then, like I said, not rehearsing, rehearsing the action, but never rehearsing the, never rehearsing the emotion. Emotions, yeah. yeah well, um... One more thing that I'd like to say, what was really important for me with, with Lubna and, and, uh, and, um, and Nisreen is that I really wanted to feel that they both uh, carried the truth of my characters in, in, in their acting, but, and, and they did. But the challenge for me as well uh, was that there was a real uh, um, chemistry between them because it's about both of them really being the character they are, but then that these two characters function, that there is a real chemistry because there had to be a chemistry between both women and with a the little child. There's really had to be this harmony between them. So that was the, the and I was lucky to have that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And well, um, um, this comes to my next question, which is uh, very like it's a very feminine and feminist uh, movie, uh, and there is a kind of you know, there is, you are critiquing, you have a critique to your own society, but you did it with a lot of love and care. Uh, how is your relationship with Morocco? And with the society in Morocco, I love Morocco. I, I I feel at home in Morocco. It is my country, and I have a lot, a lot, a deep love for Morocco. And I think that when you love a society, you you criticize it. If, when you love something, you, you criticize it. If you care for something, you criticize it. You can't be fake. You can't. Uh, you can't. I can't. I can't do things otherwise. And uh, I think that it's this deep love that is also uh, making me talk about things that I consider. Um, uh, could 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 be could be questioned. I think that's it, that when when you love you question uh, because you want things to to evolve. You want things to 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 change positively. So uh, yes, I do love my society very very deeply. 
Um, no, no, it's very, you can feel it, but where, where this love comes, deep love actually comes from, like why? <laughs> I guess it's because I'm 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 born here. I'm ra I'm raised here, and I just have a real attachment. I think Morocco is a country that is extremely rich. I think Moroccan society is very rich, rich uh, because it has a lot of beautiful things to offer. Because people's hearts are beautiful, uh, and because it's it's also it's also a very inspiring society because it's a society it's a society of uh, of contradictions. Uh, of uh, you have very different. Uh, um, um, di different parts of society that 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 cohabit uh, side by side, and and these contradictions are very tangible, um, and I think that makes for it to be to be also a very inspiring place uh, to live in. How 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 the let, let's say the uh, Arab Arabic audience reacted and the Moroccan audience reacted to the movie. The, rea the reactions were very positive. The reactions were really positive, and I was very, I was, I was very touched by that because, I, I mean, what what I felt is that there was a real, a real desire to speak about certain things that we don't necessarily speak about, uh, things that might sometimes be considered taboo, but that when they are exposed uh, and people have the opportunity to to base themselves on a on a on a on a film, on a novel, etc., to be able to speak their own mind, uh, that that opportunity is very welcome. And here I felt it really. I felt that there was this um, this desire to be able to 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 question certain things. Things that we don't necessarily question to question certain traditions uh, that are so so deep within us that they become a reality uh, that you just don't touch. So um, so that was a that was very um, a very beautiful experience to see uh, because there was a lot of debates as well um, when the film came out uh, and 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 I also felt that there was uh, um, a lot of um, things that were real positive changes that came about regarding uh, young unwed women as well, uh, young unwed mothers. Uh, there was a lot of articles in the press. There was, um, there was a real, a real uh, desire for change also that, that was um, highlighted by the film. That, was, and that, that felt really, that felt really yeah, nice. Well, I think you, you managed to do that because you did it with a lot of uh, care and respect. Like the critics, like the, the, like le, let's say, uh, touching this very sensitive sub subject with a with a care and uh, a respect, gave you the opportunity to re to make a real change, rather than if you just bl blindly criticizing with like with the intention of harming. I think you will get the opposite um, of what you uh, what you managed to do. How how uh, did 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 the, okay? You said there is you know articles and people talking about. Did the mothers that they did that came to you and contact you and? Well, let, actually, before I screened the film in Morocco to anybody, I I, I decided to 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 screen the film to uh, uh, to the young unwed mothers before it was released. So for me that was very important because I mean wow. it was basically their story. So this was a, one of the most intense, one of the most, I think, beautiful experiences I've had in my whole life. It was a, you know, a room full of, of young women. Uh, some were pregnant, some had given birth, some had given their kids, some were preparing to give them, some were gonna keep them. And I, you know, when they saw the film, the emotion was so, so strong that, I mean, I was, I, I came back home, I remember that I, I couldn't sleep that night because of all, all, all I had felt. It was really beautiful for me wow. to see, you know, and to listen to what they had to say after the, they watched the film, because what I retain and what touched me the most is that they, they said that they felt dignified, that for the first time they felt they really existed because yes, there are articles about them, uh, but there are a lot of times they're just numbers. You know, there is a certain number of unwed mothers. There is a certain number of children that are given away or, or abandoned or thrown in the, in the bins every day. But now for, for them, in any case, they'll, they felt like for the first time, well, they weren't only a number, they had a face. There was, you know, you know they were given the time to really exist uh, through a film, and they felt that they had, they said, that's what they said, that their dignity had given, been given back to them. And for me, that was yeah. the most beautiful reward. And you know, you were talking before about um, about uh, about respecting uh, respecting a culture. And I think that, I mean, for me, it's it's really it's really um, I love 
there is a lot of things that I love about tradition. Uh, I think tradition can be extremely beautiful. I think that you know there is parts of our tradition that we def definitely have to 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 be. Um, conscious about and we have to protect. And I also wanted to highlight that in, in, um, in, in Adam. I mean, there is all these things that are passed on from generation to generation that are beautiful and that we have to protect. But then tradition is also composed of things that we have to question because time advances and things evolve and the tradition can sometimes um, be, be working against us, be taking things from us. So there is also in the tradition uh, things that, you know, really are beautiful and things that are not so. And it's also about showing both aspects of the tradition, you know? It's not only just attacking um, uh, for attacking. It's really, it's, really, it's really out of love once again. Yeah. That, uh, Very clear. Well, tell us something about you personally. I mean, uh, you was born in Morocco. How is your relationship, for example, with the Arab world? With what, Arab what? Arab, yeah, the Arab, the Arab, the Arab world. The Arab world. Um, well, I was I was I was born in Morocco. I was born in Tangier, uh, raised in Tangier. I after went uh, to to university in um, I went to an American school in Tangier. After I went to to university in London, and um, with my relationship to the Arab world has been uh, ha has been uh, I don't know. I've always felt uh, felt very close, obviously, to the Arab world as a as, as a Moroccan. Um, also, heard a lot about Egypt since I was a child because my father my father studied in Egypt and lived in Egypt for for eleven years. So there was this very very you know always hearing about uh, about his uh, his um, his his uh, years in Egypt. You know something that I always fantasized very much about Egypt. Uh, so that was very present in my in my in my imagination. And unfortunately, you know, he passed away before before we could actually go together to Egypt to visit all these places. So that's something that's that, oh, that wow. happens, like, yes. We would be so proud. I mean, you were yeah, the film was in the Aljuna Film Festival. Yes. So that would be and it made a huge buzz there. So he would be so proud. I think he's watching you. Believe me, he's he's seeing how how great you did in uh, with this movie. You know, I, I, I think he's, I think he's, he's, thank you for these words because they really warm my heart. And I really think that, that he's, he's there and he sees all these things as well. I, my first short film, I was a film that I wrote, uh, that was, that I directed and wrote, at, that was, I think like 12 years ago. And it was my father's death that was really at the origin of me becoming a filmmaker. Before that, I, I you know, I didn't, I, I was thinking, I mean, I was making documentary films, but I never thought of fiction. And and when he passed, there was just something that I felt very deeply that I had to talk about uh, in the way as well death was experienced in my society. And, and so that was how I came into filmmaking through this short film that I wrote very uh, out of a need uh, uh, out of an emergent urgency to express what I felt. So I always feel that, you know, he's also been there from the start, you know, Watching over her company. No, well, I, uh, you know, we um, uh, uh, let's say um, uh, you almost said like uh, your father was the inspiration to uh, to become a film director. But why film director? Why not a painter? Why? Uh, I do. I do paint. I love painting. Uh, I I love writing. Like I said, and I I. When there was a moment actually when I felt that I, I write a lot as well. I was a journalist also before. And um, there was a moment though when I felt that there was something that I needed to express in another manner, that I needed to have the image as well. I like I told you, I love reading. I also come, I really come, my inspiration comes a lot from literature. Um, and for me, it was magical to be able to express things through words. But there was a moment when I felt that there that I needed that that I needed to 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 take it further. Uh, I don't know if, if if it's clear what I say, but in a sense, I felt that I really needed the image to be able to express things that I didn't want for that I didn't have to necessarily go through words. It's like when you read a novel and you're reading for for fifteen or twenty pages, uh, what's happening inside the character's mind, and you just have images, you know. And I just felt that there was. I don't know. There was something very, very powerful uh, that I 
that I needed to express through the image. Um, and I think it's all very complimentary at the end of the day, you know. Uh, it was never something really thought of. It's true that, of course, meanwhile, I had met Nabil Ayush, uh, who is my husband, and who is a very big inspiration for me. He is a great inspiration for me as a, as a, as a filmmaker and as a human being. Um, I, I always found his work to be, to be very beautiful, very, very powerful. And uh, I, I think that's also, obviously, uh, helped me realize uh, you know, what, what I felt uh, I wanted to do even, even further. And with my first short film, because I had never shot, a, shot a, a fiction film before, he was there to tell me, just believe in yourself, just believe in your instinct. If you really feel what you want to say, don't be afraid of anything. And that's something that I've done since then. So I think it's, it's also all these circumstances, you know, that, that, you know, all these things that, you know, come and build up inside you that you know make you want to 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 go a certain way or another but it was never something that i uh, that i planified in advance you know i just let myself exactly. get carried by life and uh, by, by 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 what i feel basically you worked with him as an actress yes you was uh, with with uh, with nabil uh, you worked with nabil as an actress how was that Yes, I did work with Nabil as an actress, with, uh, with Razia as a film that we co-wrote and uh, that I acted in, although it was not meant to be like that. We didn't co-write the film, you know, with me and the character, you know. When we finished writing, uh, Nabil said, I'd really like you to, 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 to pass the casting. And I said, okay, you know, I was a little bit nervous because uh, I had never really, I had never acted before. But at the same time, I felt that there was something so... Uh, you know, that I really wanted to defend regarding this character of, uh, of Selima in the film, uh, that, that, you know, <clears throat> I, was, I was encouraged. And I also had seen Nabil working with, a, with, a, with his actresses and actors before in other films, uh, especially in Much Love, because I was very much loved. And I thought they're so lucky to be directed by somebody like him. Uh, it's so beautiful to be directed by him. So when he proposed for me to pass a casting, I was, like I said, I was very nervous. Also, because Nabil is my husband, so I didn't want to disappoint him. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to ruin his film. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, I mean, I never asked for it. He, you know, I know Nabil is not the kind of person that will just, you know, just do things like that. You know, if he does it, it's because he really, you know, he really believed in it. So I, I you know, I let myself, you know, in his, in his hands and I was, it was a beautiful experience. Because for me, it was also taking the writing of the character that we had written together to another dimension. It was going from, from, from something that we had written on paper to actually being able to, 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 um, to express it uh, differently. And that was a beautiful, beautiful journey for me as, as a human being. Uh, and after as well, I think that even in the directing of, of Adam, it's something that has really helped me. Well, okay. And now you have uh, two directors at home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <we do. laughs> okay. Well, last, last question, like what is your situation? You have, um, you, you are married, you have, uh, how many kids you have? One child. That I, I actually got pregnant during the, when we wrote, when we wrote the character of Salima and Razia, Salima was pregnant. We wrote a pregnant Salima and I got oh, wow. pregnant during the, during the shooting of Razia. And it was through this pregnancy that I wrote Adam, you know, because I really wrote Adam as I was pregnant. That's how, like I told you before, that's how I started writing. And I finished writing Adam with my baby by my side. Uh, so uh, yes, he's, he's three and a half now. He's called Noam. Well, we, we, I have a feeling I get to, to know you better. Uh, uh, thank you for this interview. Thank you. And uh, we wish you all the luck with, uh, with the release in the US. Thank it's you. a beautiful movie and it deserves to have a very uh, uh, special place in the heart and minds of uh, people. Thank you so much, honey. It was a, it was a real pleasure meeting you. And, uh, and I'm, I'm very happy for this conversation, about this conversation we've had. And uh, my love to Nabil, we love him all. And next time in Morocco, I promise I'm gonna visit you both. Yes, please do, please do. And my so wife. A lot, a lot of good about you. Thank you. Okay, yalla. Good yeah. luck, good luck. Thank you very much, bye.